Hello everyone and welcome back to the Pikmin 2 bonus series. I'm Multigame Master 1 and this time in segment 2 of this series, we're going to take a look at Louis's notes about the enemy bugs and plants that we have encountered on the planet. I'm very curious as to the kind of notes that Louis has written, and I think I do have an ideal voice to give Louis. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get things started. We'll start with the red bulb orb, and to access Louis's notes, we press the negative button. Here we go. Red bulb orb. Plump specimens are best spit roasted whole, stuffed with a lime and a slab of bacon, based frequently to ensure a magnificently moist haunch. So, Louis's notes about the bugs and plants that we have seen involve savagely cooking all of them? Already this is way too weird. Let's move on. Hairy Bulbor. Remove all the Bulborbs here, wrap the beast in foil along with a half lemon, and place it directly on the grill. The foil should protect the carcass from scorching, and the lemon will give the meat an elegant hint of citrus. I am definitely going to feel really ill after all of this. Orange Bulbor. This Bulbor's meaty flanks make for salaciously savory steaks that shouldn't be missed. Steaks? Really? I am never going to look at steaks the same way ever again, let alone any other type of food. Thanks, Louie. Dwarf Red Bulbor. For a blissful bisque, mince the entire beast finely and stir in with heavy cream, artichoke hearts, and a pinch of black pepper. Heat slowly until piping hot. Mmm, rich and creamy. Yuck. I am definitely going to need to go to the bathroom after all of this is said and done. Snow Bulbor. Best grill and served hot over a bed of fresh spinach and crumbled blue cheese. Oh my god, my stomach is already churning. Dwarf Orange Bulbor. Although difficult to prepare, this exquisite creature is more than worth the effort. Great in fajitas. Okay. Every once in a while, I like to eat fajitas. Now, because of those notes, I may never look at fajitas the same way ever again. I may not even eat one. Ever. Spotty Bow Bear For an unrivaled green curry, peel away the spotty bow bear skin, pulverize the juicy innards, and stew until curiously fragrant. Oh, my stomach. It's okay. I can get through this. We'll all get through this. Together. Dwarf Bull Bear. Remove innards, stuff with sage and finely aged proskyoto, and broil until golden brown, the ultimate crowd pleasers. I am not pleased by that at all. Also, if I mispronounce some words, guys, once again, I'm really sorry. Bulbor Larva. This meager creature offers little meat, but its eyeballs are a local delicacy. Try them with okra and a dollop of sour cream. That is just... Ew. Eating eyeballs is gross. Looking at eyeballs is gross. This idea of a meal from a bobor larva? All too gross. I find nothing satisfying about it at all. Fiery Bow Blacks. No stove, no problem. This sizzling beast practically cooks itself. Remember to thoroughly extinguish the steaks prior to eating. Oh my god, once again, steaks. Why? Why, Louie? Why such the weird appetite? Especially for bugs. Is food really all you can think about? Let alone... Acquiring food from cooking bugs? Water Dumple Deep fried dumples without batter for all of the flavor with half the fat. This is sick. Boltman Grind the meat and season with allspice, salt, and ground white pepper. Press the seasoned meat into meat satchels, then pan fry them with onions. Prior to serving, smother the brats with Dijon mustard and sauerkraut. Buns are optional. I would not find eating Boltman rather pleasing, especially when it comes to 
cooking the little quote unquote brats. I mean, those guys aren't all bad, they just follow their leader and fall in line. I see no reason to savagely kill them or eat them for that regard. That's just awful. Really, really awful. Also guys, you may already know this about me, but I have never eaten a single bug in my life and I do not intend to eat a bug in the near and far future. Fiery Bullhog Roast this flavorful beast for several hours, letting it stew in its own succulent juices. Don't worry about overcooking this beast, it's scorch proof. That's kinda good to know. Watery Blowhog This beast's unrivaled moistness gives it a melt-in-the-mouth quality that's incomparable. Melt-in-the-mouth Yeah, okay, sure, we'll go with that. Armor Cannon Beetle Larva Carefully remove every grain of sand, peel back the exoskeleton, and slurp heartily. What? S slurping? You mean slurp the creature's internal juices? I, 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 I don't know what to make of that. It, it, it's sick. It's just really, really sick. I can already feel my stomach churning just thinking about that. Decorated cannon beetle. Slice the meat into tender cutlets and vigorously apply a lime and pepper rub. Pan fry until lightly crusted. Accompany with watercress and drizzle with freshly prepared tamarind sauce. I have no idea what that is. Before we continue guys, can I just say by the way that I think I do recall an instance from the Emperor's New Groove in which Pacha slurped the internal juices of some kind of bug with a straw. When I first saw that, and I was really little at the time, I thought nothing of it, but now looking back at it, I find that to be really disgusting. I mean, do villagers like Pacha do that for a living? For means of food? Oh my god, my stomach. Let's keep moving. I'm gonna get through this. Puffy Blowhog. Slice this creature's feather light skin into triangles, deep fry it until crispy, and salt generously. Makes the perfect scooping chimp to accompany fresh mango salsa. So, like a tortilla chip. Gross. J just, just gross. I eat tortilla chips sometimes. Now, as often as I do eat tortilla chips, I, 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 I just don't I just don't know what to say about this. I just don't know what to say about this. This is way too weird. But I will say this. I'm probably not going to eat tortilla chips as often as I would like to now. Withering Bullhog. Hang this creature on a rack and sun dry on a hot afternoon. When suitably crisp, grind the sun dried beast into powder. Makes a great substitute for cayenne or curry powder. That's pretty weird. Gatling Groink. Remove the cannon and ammo stockpile, then vigorously tenderize the meat with a heavy mallet. Stir fry with caramelized onions and figret sprouts. Spoon over a steaming bowl of fluffy white rice and douse with chili sauce. That is really gross. Iridescent Flint Beetle. An essential flavor accentuating ingredient in gumbo and jambalaya, also delicious in soups, broths, and marinades. I've only eaten soups amongst all of those bold goods that Louis has mentioned. Yuck. Iridescent Glint Beetle. This precious treat is exceptionally rare. I could sell it back at home for a fortune. Then, I could use the cash to upgrade my kitchen, buy galactic class ingredients, and even star in my own cooking show, The Insect Gourmet. Okay, two things. One, I find it very satisfying that Louis hasn't made anything disgusting about the 
Comet of the Iridescent Glint Beetle like he did the other bugs so far. And the second thing, the Insect Gourmet. I highly doubt that everyone in Hakotate is going to watch a show like that. It's a good thing that this creature is exceptionally rare to find. So therefore, chances of Louie satisfying his own dream and let alone cooking this beast if he ever plans on it, although he intends to sell it, is rare in and of itself. Doodlebug. Oh, this is going to be gross. Especially considering the Doodlebug constantly farts. Looking for a flavor that will surprise and delight your guests? This beast aroma may surprise your guests, but it won't be delightful. Yeah, no kidding. Especially when it keeps farting and letting out all of that poisonous gas. And speaking of which... Yeah, let's just keep moving, shall we? Female Shear Grub. For an unforgettable quiche, slice this creature up and mix with four eggs, two vine-ripened tomatoes, diced zucchini, and generous handfuls of feta and Swiss. Bake until crusty and golden. This beast is most flavorful if caught and cooked just after laying its eggs. Mayo Shear Grub. Spread several specimens in the bottom of a casserole dish and layer with sliced avocado. Bake until the meat is choice and the cheese is lusciously browned. I... I, I, I can't. I, can, I can't even. I can't even. Sherwig. Grate this beast into a zest and whisk with sugar, cream, and chopped dark chocolate for a lusciously indulgent mouse... Moose, that's a true culinary coup de gras. So it's best used as a dessert treat. I'm just gonna move on. Coking Baronet. Boil in the shell with a pinch of salt until bright red and serve piping hot with tartar sauce. Oh my goodness. Who would even eat something like that in the first place? Ravenous Whisker Pillar. Delicious skillies seared or sauteed with scallions and a red Genovese sauce. Oh my god. A no beetle. Drain the electrical charge before boiling. Although it is possible to eat an anole beetle while it is charged, doing so may result in an unpleasant tingling sensation. I hardly recall seeing anyone in my life that would eat electricity or anything that's electrically charged. That's just rather unsensational. Midite. Flash fry with garlic and red chilies in a hot pan, then sprinkle with grated gorgonzola. Some dinner guests may find the legs unappealing, so it's best to remove them before serving. Even if the legs were removed, I'm pretty sure no one would eat bugs like those. Let's be honest here. Hermit Crawmad. Shuck from the shell, bake on high heat until crispy, then dip in a pot of melted milk chocolate. Lip smacking sweet. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, I like dark chocolate, but no one could even pay me to do something like that. Dip this in dark chocolate. I'm pretty sure it will ruin my sweet taste buds altogether for the rest of my life. Swooping Snitch Bug. Remove the wings, marinate a well-marbled steak for several hours in a chipotle marinade, then charbroil to perfection. That sounds like a very lengthy and disgusting procedure. Bumbling Snitch Bug. Remove the wings and discard the remainder of the beast. Enjoy the luxurious wafer-thin wings with fine water dumple caviar. I'm not really sure what that is, but I can only assume that it's going to be gross. Careening dirigi bug. Pull off the balloon-like air sacs, mince the meaty abdomen, and shape it into small cakes. Pan-sear the cakes until crusted, but be careful not to overcook the delicate meat. 
When ready to serve, garnish the plate with the vibrant air sacs. Air sacs. Sorry, I read that with the incorrect tone. Even the most discerning dinner guests will be dazzled by the colorful presentation. I'm sure they would. Or maybe that's just you, Louie. Antenna beetle. Guys, please. Stop. Shut up. Extract me from the exoskeleton and sear on all sides in a hot wok to seal in the flavor. Top the dish off with a splash of spicy peanut sauce. Too gross. Just way too gross. Lesser spotted jelly flow. Similar in taste and texture to gelatin, this jiggling mass of jelly can be sculptured into all kinds of created shapes. As a bonus, it also doubles as professional grade hair gel. It's the perfect cool summer treat. So you can basically make jelly out of it. And also use it as hair gel. No thank you. No thank you. Greater spotted jelly flow. Like a fine cheese, the aroma of this fluid floater can be oppressive, but its flavor must be experienced to be believed. Also makes an unforgettable non-dairy spread. I'm not really sure what to make of that, but I can only assume that that's also going to be gross. Fiery Dweevil. The search for a gourmet, high-protein salad topping alternative to bacon bits is over. Grind this spicy dweevil into tasty micro chunks and toss them generously over your salad to add instant flair and flavor. Bacon bits from a fiery dweevil? Seriously? I sometimes eat bacon bits in my salad from time to time, but now I may not for a long time. An old dweevil. Raw an old dweevil makes for an unforgettable sushi tree, but if it is not prepared by an expert hand with exacting precision, consumption could result in a jolting electrical explosion of apocalyptic proportion. Then no one should try this. Not even you, Louie. Caustic dweevil. Inedible. Effects of consumption include uncontrollable arm flailing and enthusiastic dishwashing. I'm pretty sure that all bugs on this planet are inedible to eat. And also, how do you know this, Louis? Have you tried it out yourself? That's the only explanation I can think of. Munged Weevil. Exposure to even extreme heat doesn't seem to rid this creature of deposits of potent gas. It's probably best for everyone if you avoid eating this hazardous fare. I'm pretty sure that it's a danger for anyone to eat any of these bugs. Let's be honest here. I mean, seriously, who in this world would eat all of these bugs? Who? Who, I ask you? Volatile Dweevil. This scorching species combusts upon contact with the tongue, only edible by the adventurous and asbestos tongue. I'm sure you're one of them, Louis. And before you guys ask, no, I'm not one of them. And I will never eat a volatile Dweevil. Ever. Toady Boyster. Pan sear with herbs and oil until lightly crusted on the outside and rosy on the inside. Complement the savory flavors with a light and buttery creme sauce. Gross. Just gross. Yellow Wallywog. Please let this be about frog chops. Beer batter and deep fry for a down home flavor you won't soon forget. Weird and gross. Wallywog. Wallywogs are best ground up, shape into a patty, and flame broil on a grill. Slap on tomato slices, lettuce, onions, ketchup, and slide the patty between the sesame seed bun for the ultimate beast burger experience. Burgers? I often eat burgers. Now I may not for a long time. Thanks, Louie. Thank you. Thank you for... Ruining my taste buds. Wogpo. Fish sticks, maybe? I don't know. Wogpo's can be eaten raw. 
I'd rather not, thank you, but they're much more flavorful when steamed or grilled, also heavily in risotto. Feel free to experiment with this lush ingredient. No thank you, I think I'll pass.